Okay, those of you in the studio have already seen him here. For those of you at home, ladies and gentlemen, Jose Feliciano. Yeah. Hi, how you doing? All right, good. 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 How was, uh, how was the trip? You only got off the plane a few hours ago, didn't you? Yes, that's correct. Well, um, our trip was really fine, and so far the, uh, the Aus part of the Australian tour has been very successful. We, um, you know, it really makes me feel good to, to be back here and uh, meet a lot of uh, new people and pl plus some old friends and things like that. Mm -hmm. You've been up to where? Newcastle and Brisbane? Yes, we went to Newcastle, Brisbane, and uh, here we are now in Melbourne. We didn't go to Adelaide this year, and I... Uh, uh, I'd have laid any money that we would have gone. Uh -huh. you know, <laughs> 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 it said in the, uh, I always explain to people, they said in the, uh, in the uh, brochures that they sent us that you are an, an expert punster, they said. Well, the uh, first example. yeah, well, I, I, I enjoy it. I think it's good to catch people off guard, providing you don't say anything that, uh, that is derogatory and things like that. Listen, I, I was, and this is, uh, people will probably laugh, but... I was watching uh, that film clip, or I was listening to it, either way, yeah. uh, and I, I really thought that was exciting, you know, especially the, uh, the kung fu part. The driving was okay, but I've seen, you know, I've seen driving scenes like in Bullet and things like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, George, I think, I think George did a fantastic job in the uh, kung fu thing. I thought it was really great. I'm oh, glad you liked it. Yeah. 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 No, really. Really. Did you ever get the feeling of being sent up? Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, but it's, no, I mean, hey, we, as a matter of fact, right now, um, Don, I'm scoring a movie. Uh, the music for it, and it's a Gordon Parks uh, production, and the name of the movie is Aaron Loves Angela. It's kind of a love story that, uh, it's kind of a love story with a little super fly adventure in it, you know? Uh -huh. well, this, did this come about because, um, uh, I don't know if many of you are aware, he wrote Chico and the Man. Uh, yeah, that's exactly. Present. And it was for the, for the series. That's very interesting you bring that up. Well, did you write that song for the series, or were you commissioned to write the song for the series? What I mean, do you understand no, what I was kind of... Uh, well, I was sold. Um, what happened was this, that uh, uh, James Comack, the producer of Chico and the Man, um, was approached by my agent uh, in, in America, and they said to him, listen, you know, why not have Jose write uh, the music for Chico and the Man? And he, since I hadn't really had, in America, what you'd call big hits as a writer, mm. um, th there was a lot of doubt whether as to I could deliver or not. And so once they sold him on the idea, and whatnot. Then I went into the studio. I have my own recording studio, and I went in there and we and I wrote the song about really at 11 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Had it all ready for them uh, by five in the afternoon, and uh, he came and heard it. And uh, you know, he was he, he said, "Well, you know, glad you know he was really glad that we could do it." And uh, ever since then, it's really been a very successful song, and the series has been great too. Yeah. Did you know that uh, Sammy Davis was going to record that? No, I did not. I it caught me by surprise. You know, to hear. Chicago, don't be discouraged. You wrote your first song when you were 10 years old. Um, well, I wrote, yeah, in, it was a rock and roll song called I'm Rockin' and a Rollin'. Uh -huh. And uh, as a matter of fact, I wasn't even rolling and rocking then. I was just playing for school. Mm -hmm. uh, but You concentrated more on music than you did on schoolwork, though, didn't you? Very much so. Um, I, you know, for me, school was a waste of time, and I don't mean to... Uh, to put it down, because I, I did learn a lot. I learned many things in school, such as uh, to eat lunch very fast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to, sleep, you know, <laughs> to sleep in class. Uh, yeah, right. That was one of my favorite pastimes, you know. <laughs> uh, because really, music was my whole life, even as a little kid. I, I, I knew that that was where I was going to go, and there was nothing that was going to steer me uh, astray from that. Mm -hmm. So music was really my life, and it still is my life. Uh, I don't know what I'll do when I'm uh, Frank Sinatra's age, because I don't think I could really retire, you know? Yeah. Let's hope that I, uh, let's hope that uh, maybe I can take some young artists, some people with a lot of talent, uh, and, um, you know, maybe I can help them in their careers, you know? You have some, uh, some very fine ambitions, from what I read. Uh, you, you definitely would love to go to Spain and play with some of the classical guitarists over there. And, yeah, uh, I really would, like Segovia. And, uh, I think one of my favorite British guitar players is uh, Julian Bream and John Williams also. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, you know, it's a funny thing. I think John Williams, I don't know if it's a classical guitarist, but John Williams wrote the music to Jaws, the movie Jaws. Is that right? Yeah. I didn't know. I saw that film, actually, just a little while ago. They gave us a preview on it. We're, oh, we're that's planning on trying to show something here, too. Oh, well, listen, if you do, nobody will go swimming on the Australian beaches. Okay? Yeah, I know. I was telling them that. It's a shocking experience, believe me. You played it. <laughs> <laughs> in here it's too quick for me you know, 
You um, you also did some acting parts for the first time in your career, <coughs> McMillan and Wife, and a, and a and Kung feature, Fu. A feature role in Kung Fu. Yeah. Right, it wasn't as good as George's, but um, I I had uh, I played really a, a Spanish character. They always when they give you a break in Hollywood, they typecast you. You know, like um, in McMillan and Wife, I played a Spanish character, Rico Martinez, mm -hmm. and uh, it was kind of uh, you know I could play it because I'm Spanish and uh, and it was very easy. I was a classical guitarist. Mm. And they tested everybody else for the part, but uh, everybody, you know, they, they didn't pass. So, mm. so I, I really enjoyed it. It was fun. It was, uh, it's a lot of work because you have a lot to remember. You know, unlike sighted actors who can get away with the uh, cue cards and things like that, yeah. uh, with me, I, you know, I got the script in Braille, and I had to learn a lot of the stuff, you know, and uh, take it by sections because they'll say, for example, okay, tomorrow we are doing the whatever sequence. And so you have to study the night before. At least I did. Mm. But I noticed that some of the actors, when I worked with them uh, live, they couldn't remember their parts for nothing. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about when you travel? Do you uh, carry Braille books with you or something, or do you keep yourself occupied like a long period well, of I time? Well, I got Playboy you... in Braille. <laughs> <laughs> if you do, loan it to me, will you? <laughs> you know, the thing is, no, well, the thing is, they don't have the pictures, which is sad, you know? Yeah. They, just, they, they just have the articles. But what I do is I put people on. I'll be sitting at an airport, and I got my Playboy magazine, and I'm going like this, and I'm, oh, she looks great. And do you, uh, I don't, I don't know whether this is a touchy subject or not, but you, your dog, that is your companion, sort of, can't come here because of the... Um, quarantine laws. The quarantine laws. Yes. Uh, and um, uh, how long have you been away from him now? Well, it's only been about two weeks, but I, I will say this, you know, now that I'm a, on a TV program that's being watched by everybody, I think uh, I heard that Melbourne has uh, two guide dog schools, mm -hmm. and in case they're watching, you know, guide dog schools only do half of the job, because what happens to the student who has a dog after he leaves the school? You know, the school doesn't realize that they have to contend with, like, uh, the dogs sometimes are not allowed in restaurants. Uh, a very famous airline, uh, which I flew on to Australia, and it wasn't Air New Zealand. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, they, ha they have this thing where they, uh, they don't want to allow guide dogs on their plane, and if they do, they have to buy a first-class seat. And um, um, in some ways, I think, you know, well, let's face it, a guide dog would not ride well in economy. But what about the, the bloke that can't afford the money, you know? Yeah, that's uh, that, true, that yeah. can't afford to take his dog uh, on first class and has to go coach. So mm. I think that really the guide dog schools and, and the government have the power to really change a few of those laws, not necessarily for my benefit, because I can do without, but I feel really bad about, uh, uh, you know, blind people Less who want to come to Australia, yeah, mm. you know, who want to come and bring their dogs and whatnot, and they can't. And they allow show dogs, which I think is a waste of time. But uh, mm. Why'd you get a big Great Dane, teach him to stand on his hind legs and dress him up and tell him he's your manager? Yeah. <laughs> And if the guy wants to argue with you, say, argue with him, Charlie. Or with your own. Teach him a few tricks like kill. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. You're beautiful. So tell me, tell me about uh, what this album, you did. you did an album called 10 to 23. I got off that subject for a minute. And on there, I understand, was included this first song that you wrote when you were 10 years old. Is that right? Well, actually, no, I didn't write the song. It was a song, though, that, uh, that was very popular. Me living in the Spanish neighborhood, we always listened to Spanish music. And... For the time, anyway, it was a song about a, <clears throat> a young country boy who wants, uh, he's got a house and he's got his dogs and his chickens, but all he needs is a woman to take care of him, which is kind of uh, very primitive, you know. I mean, uh, yeah, at 10 years old, I used to think it was a great song, and now that I'm grown up, I see the message, and I really don't, don't mm. care for the message, because I think women, uh, women are basically really good people, and they're meant to do more than just take care of a home and take care of a guy, you know. Uh, there's a lady coming on very shortly. <laughs> There's a, there's a lady coming on very shortly that will uh, back all that up, as a matter of fact. Yeah. You haven't had, have you met Claudia yet? Has no, she I've, never, I've never met Claudia, but I, I will say this, that um, there's extremes to everything, you know. And yeah. I, I, think, I think that uh, women's liberation is a, is a very good thing in a lot of ways. I think that a woman should, if she works uh, in the same job as a man, should get equal pay. And I think mm -hmm. that... Uh, I, th I also think that she should be treated, uh, and I also think, like, for example, instead of the man always flipping the bill at a restaurant, that the woman should once in a while say, hey, I'll take it this way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I really do, because, <laughs> and, and I'll tell you my reasons. My reasoning is this, that all life long, it's always been 
the man that, you know, takes out the woman and is the charmer and this, this, and buys the wine and everything. And I really think it would give a woman a certain amount of satisfaction to know that if she wants to treat a guy for dinner, that she can. And nobody can say, well, you know, no, I'll do it because I'm the man. You know, it's uh, equal opportunity, right? Should she pick <laughs> him up at the house and bring him flowers and candy and all that stuff? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't bring mine candy too much because uh, they get tooth decay, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> conscientious, I love it. <laughs> Listen, if I was to, it's a sort of like uh, against the rules or something, but if I was to impose on you and ask you to let me take you over here to this uh, stool we have set up, all right. and I handed you a guitar, would you play a few licks for us? Just a oh, all right, things? you know, I'll, um, I'll play a few things, sure. Will you? I'm happy to. Come on with me. <laughs> I'd like to invite everybody to, uh, to our concert uh, tomorrow here in uh, Melbourne and also in Perth. We'll be there in Perth. And Perth. And <laughs> 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 but anyway, <clears throat> can we have a little guitar? Can you hear the guitar? Okay. Yeah, okay. We'd like to uh, play this for all the women's livers <laughs> and kidneys, too. <laughs> What band, if you know the song, you can hop right along.
siento que me has olvidado y que ya no vivo en tu corazón. Thank you.